Welcome back to another episode of the Back Corner Pod. So I think for today, um, it's a timely release. Um, we hope that we'll be able to edit this um, and post it before the recent Tesla earnings. So I think we actually went through multiple rounds of grilling about individual theses uh, behind the different companies, right? So I think, of course, the long-awaited one, which is around Tesla, and out of the four of us, I think Eric is actually the biggest Tesla bull out here. So um, it's an opportune time before the earnings to basically get some of his perspective around Tesla and why you stay invested and are there any risks or concerns around the company investment today? So I'll pass the time over to Eric. Okay, guys. Uh, so basically, you all know that I'm like super bullish on the superchargers and the development surrounding it. I think even before all those people start to subscribe in and uh, say that they will adopt Tesla charging, right? I think I was already very bullish. Even Tesla, they themselves using their supercharger. Basically, I see it as a Trojan horse. La. Like, basically, Elon Musk said, Tesla doesn't do any advertising, right? I agree with Darren on this point because he was saying that, oh, uh, all these people coming in, taking up the, the supercharging, right? They are free advertising for, for Tesla. I think even if they don't take up the charging, right? Like, because of the sheer number of Tesla supercharging station, people will, like, drive past and see, like, oh, okay. This is it's, it's like McDonald's, you know, like the, the strategy is not just selling burgers. The strategy is to occupy prime real estate. So basically advertising is about occupying the mind chair, right? The, the eyeball space. So if they have all the real estate, that's when they are, they are going to influence the mind chair. So I think Gordon Johnson recently, he went up to NBC again. He said that, oh, it's a broken growth story and they're, they're not selling every car they make. Uh, yeah, so broken recorder. Lah. <laughs> Basically, Tesla is uh, increasing their, their production, uh, even at the, the newest uh, gigafactories. So I think it's a, it's a good thing. Uh, they Basically, they, I think they are striding into uh, volume production already, if I'm not wrong. Uh. So the profit margin should be... Uh, ramping up but of course like as they are ramping up right they are also cutting prices to spur the demand so i think uh it might be a trade-off i won't expect them their profit margin to be like crazy going up but basically to spur that demand uh they are just cutting prices um i think if 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 you guys any of you watch the C Stephen mark ryan's right he actually was telling us about the inflation-adjusted prices for Tesla. 10 years ago, it was 90000 So after it adjusting for inflation, right, a Tesla now, right, it will cost like 30 k in dollar terms uh, 10 years ago. So Tesla is keeping their promise to, to keep pressing down prices uh, as they scale their innovation and cost savings and all that. So to me, I think it is still fairly bullish. And the first Cybertruck, I think, has been uh, completed. Uh. As in the first one, I think they are delivering to customers. So that is uh, positive for me. I think that will stir a lot of uh, attention. For me, I'm, I'm more of a passive investor. So I don't really look at too much news because I, 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 I have full trust in Elon Musk. Uh. <clears throat> so I, so some, I went to check some like the gross margin and the stuff like that, right? Uh, their automotive revenue has been going up. This is a very clear trend. Uh. Then the other thing is their gross margin has been coming down since I think 2022, somewhere around there. Uh. So right now it's around 21%. I believe this should stabilize around here. Uh. Like, I don't think Tesla will continue to cut too much because that whole story of the recession, it seems like it's gone already. <laughs> like, I don't hear news about this coming anymore. So um, plus with that cyber truck thing, Okay, it's still too early to deliver any big profit from Cybertruck. Uh, probably we'll see the full strength of Cybertruck by next year. Not within the next one or two quarters. La, that, but that they will start delivering soon. The thing that I'm more worried about, not worried, la, is, is, is the Twitter side of things. La. Twitter side, it seems like they are posting some losses this, this year. They reported some losses. I saw some news about it. At most, it will just affect the stock price. La, but the growth story of Tesla is still intact, la, I feel. Yeah, so quite excited to see what's coming up these weeks. 
earnings, I, I believe it should beat expectations again, given how much the delivery uh, went up and everyone's expectation is so low. Uh, so let's see how. Come back to the Gordon Johnson interview. I didn't listen the full interview, but I think I, I saw one, one point that he mentioned. He said after this uh, charging network open to, you know, like Ford, GM um, cars, right? So for a Tesla car owners, last time it used to be like exclusive. Like, like I'm, I'm happy to wait for the uh, charging station if the other car is Tesla. So we are buddy, right? Now suddenly Ford and come and, you know, like take up the spot and make, make me harder to find charger and so on. Do, do you think this is a concern for like uh, car owners? Would, would it like uh, cut out one reasons for people to, to buy Tesla since if I'm buying Ford in next year, then I can still use the Tesla uh, charging network, right? But what, what's your view on this? Actually, the one I, I don't know, man, is is uh is basically just people uh putting out a reason. Oh, uh, will they be pissed off? Will they be pissed? I think the the most important thing is to ask the Tesla owners. Are, are you pissed off because you have to wait for your charging and all that? But the I think uh I read somewhere right that they say majority of the charging right done by people is mostly done at home most of the time because uh i think the us people they stay like landed la, not like us <laughs> we all stay in the hdb and all that so everyone is like uh, charging outside but yeah i think those those uh foreign countries they mostly have their own homes landed they'll just charge it overnight unless they're going for long trips so i technically i don't see that as like a big problem because it's like 80 20 percent 80 percent they are charging at home overnight 20% they are outside, maybe they need just a fast charge or something. So it's not like a is I don't see it as a critical issue. I, I see it more like towards the, you know, my my slant is towards the, the mind share thing. Like so you see a lot of Tesla charges and everything. So if you're a Ford owner, you're like, hmm. you're not the legit, <laughs> legit EV, you know, thing that you are like uh <laughs> Those kind of illegitimate one. Uh, okay, I just come in, sneak, uh, come and charge my thing. Yeah, so I don't know. If if I were a, a buyer, right, I will be thinking like, oh, I want to get a Tesla. I want to get the, the actual thing. Yeah. Actually, I wanted to ask Eric, right? So you were throwing out the numbers from Stephen McRae's not Ryan, right? That he said inflation adjusted last time was 90k. Now a Tesla is 30k. I think, I thought... When I, I think at least from a perspective, if I'm going to invest into a company, right? I, I would want company products to sell more and more expensive, margins to keep increasing so that they have more money to feed back to shareholders, whether it's by dividends, cash buyback, whatever. Lah. So I think from that perspective, what do, do you see this trend continuously going down? I, I do understand of the trade-off between volume and margins, right? So now Elon has, I mean, the goal is to transition the world to sustainable energy. So he needs to bring the volume. But then in this case, like, uh, let's say the, 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 the car is very cheap and next time in the future, it's going to get cheaper and cheaper and cheaper after inflation adjusted. So then what are you expecting? Are you expecting the battery to boom, the, the, the full self-driving to boom, insurance to boom? Or how, how are investors going to benefit in the longer run when when you see that the main product itself just keeps, uh, the margin keeps down. I think the, if you are doing a business, right, the main thing is not just about the price of your product, it's the price of the uh, accessories, so, so-called the things that come along with it. A very prime example is a razor blade, right? Like Gillette, they, they sell you the razor blade like 10 plus dollars, but their profit margin is not in the original razor blade. It is, it is in the subsequent blades that you buy. So they lock you in. And then basically every like two, three months, you will, you will need to replenish that cartridge. So I think the business model of Tesla is something like that. Like they're developing FSD, insurance. Or all these are like, how do you put it? Uh, it's uh, associated costs, but they can do it better than everyone else. Like, so do you want to go with them or do you want to like go with the Blue Cruise, GM Blue, Blue Cruise that don't know cruise to wear? So I, I don't know, it's, it's, uh, they, they are putting out the best products and everything. So I see it as, I don't mind even if they, they give away the car for free because they give away the car, right? When full self driving is done, 
then after that they they can get back the the profit uh. like people like Netflix and all that even gaming companies they will probably like oh uh can I like put some advertisement inside your car you know when you when your people are playing games then my advertisement will come out all that so so people will pay for those recurring you know, you know revenue rather than the upfront like the upfront I think basically what Elon is aiming for I don't know whether is that the case uh, is basically just to like break even on the material cost I feel like if a, a push comes to a show like if really recession comes in then you're like okay whatever I just need the volume zero margin no? I just sell all my cars he can do it ma. and Tesla still has the cash to weather this storm but as of now, I agree with Bunti. There's no necessity to do that. No need. Because the demand they spur, right? Just nice match their increasing production. So, okay, lo, you got profit, just take. La. <laughs> like, why Why do you want to like keep cutting the price for no good reason? That's the strategy. This this term is called loss leader. La. So, yeah. that's what PlayStation was doing, right? Uh, they were selling their uh, Sony PlayStation 5 at a loss. Then when people have bought in the gaming console, they start to buy a lot more games to increase the and, and, and it will increase the uh, Sony's profit. La. Then the other thing is uh the Dyson. The Dyson that recently came out with this weird mask looking thing, right? Uh one theory is that uh people obviously not buy the mask because it looks very weird. La. And it's actually not a, not that good uh filtering mask thing. La. But the theory is that by when people see this mask, right, they will relate it back to their hair, hair dryer thing, uh, their vacuum thing. So by sell, by creating this mask, right, it will increase the awareness that Dyson exists. So I think it's the same for Tesla. They can, like Eric said, like, they can just reduce it to zero. It doesn't matter. Like, the, the real money actually comes from the service and the rest that comes afterwards. Like. Actually, on this point, I wanted to ask Kelvin because just now you did say that gross margins are stabilized at twenty one percent and won't cut too much, right? So assuming that this is really the, I don't know what's the strategy of Tesla. I mean, in their strategy team, but let's say this push, like Eric suggested, like there are certain things or developments around the world that requires Tesla to keep cutting down to meet demand, and then gross margins start going down 15, 10, 8, 5 percent. Will you still be holding Tesla, or is that is that like that premise is? Not falsifiable in this case, right? Even if their gross margin is zero percent. For gross margin to go that low, I think it, they have this strategy, right, to sell as many cars as they can. So I don't think it will stay low forever because it, in the end, this is not just a car company; it's a technology company, as everyone says. So once you once they get into this ecosystem, their insurance, their full self driving, hopefully, their app store, maybe will all come out right plus recently i also saw another news that tesla is going to start another factory in india uh which is another low cost place to produce car so i think all this will help also uh, um first is to reduce the, the car production costs so then when when there's demand back into tesla right they can just re- increase the car price back to normal uh then this this will not this will increase the margin back to normal level so I think what they are doing now is actually flexing their um their cost structure, meaning that um if you're comparing Tesla versus other um EVs, right, their cost is the lowest. So what they can do is they cut the prices and they just can grab the market shares. I'll be a lot more worried, let's say, if they cut the prices and let's say they can get a 10% gross margin or 5%, then their competitors also cut the prices but still gross margin, let's say comparable, 5%. That, that will be a lot more uh, worried because uh, meaning that now everyone just like, you know, spiral down to like less, less lower and lower prices and everyone just be loss making. But let's say if other car makers, they are, they are not able to cut so much because it's already bleeding. Like they don't have the scale. They can't, they can't churn up so much car. Uh, what happened is that Tesla just dropped the price. Even if they cut to 5%, you know that other car makers, they can't compete, right? So eventually, it will be dominating um, the, the entire, like the huge portions of the market shares. Uh. I think this strategy will work, but it, it, it's not like um, it will work for everyone. It, it, you need to have a very low cost structure. Uh. And for now, I think uh, in EV space, I think Tesla is still leading. But if you, um, comp- like you include in like all the gas car, uh, ice cars, right? Um, that will be like depending on how you compare. Uh, because 
ultimately these are like still uh, a, a bit different. So uh, I think it depends on how you see it. Okay, uh, can I just uh, very quickly address Kelvin's point? Uh? He was referring to uh, Tesla India, right? Uh, I just did a quick Google. I Because I didn't hear anything about Tesla India coming, taking shape. Uh, I think they are still in talks only. Uh. It's not finalized. Uh, the one that I think is almost finalized, right? They're getting the last permits is uh, Giga Mexico. So that one is almost kind of 99% firm up. They're just waiting for the final permits. Then they'll start the groundbreaking already. Uh, so in, to be sure, India, I think it's just a proposal. Uh, not, 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 and some of the, the, I think one of the finance minister came out and said they won't be giving Tesla uh, preferred tax, tax uh, rebate. So I don't know. It's not really a super great place to have a factory. <laughs> So if you don't give rebates, I don't know what's the incentive to start there. The other time that, <clears throat> that Darren was saying Tesla should start a factory in Singapore, right? No space. La. <laughs> you start in Singapore, then you need to take up one whole town to do it. Build a new island. Yeah, then, then we stay west. Yeah. You just pull out the dog. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> wish, uh. actually, I think, actually, I think I wanted to until the, uh, I have another question because um, I, this question actually Eric asked me before during the Buffer episode I thought to ask you back also so I think from the perspective where you are also quite or at least part of the story actually comes with based on the discussions just now were about how Tesla is able to uh, yeah, they, they can sell it at zero margins but everything else is basically a little bit like Apple but Apple still earns a majority of their, their, their margins from their iPhone but they sell accessory at like it costs an arm and a leg for one stupid adapter it's like 50 bucks but i think from tesla's perspective you sell insurance you sell battery you sell you sell whatever right uh, do you put a timeline on it like you see when tesla continue executing within the next three to five years is there a few like a uh, cut off we're saying in the next three years if tesla still doesn't show um, in terms of their numbers the margins on whether the other parts of the business can still grow steadily or even start taking up more and more share while uh, maybe let's say uh, hypothetically, yeah, uh, three years later, if bulk of the revenue and margin is still from the car, but the car margin keep going down, and then you don't see any form of turning in terms of or, or improvement in terms of um, how the rest of the business are building out. Um, do you have like cut loss or like oh this this is not playing out or the execution is not good? Actually, happily, right? I think Tesla never posted such a issue before. I think um margins going down is uh is one of the, the thing that is the Tesla bears will make a lot of noise about. But I think in terms of growth, uh, absolute growth, right? Tesla is quite a beast. Uh. Like every quarter, you see some kind of growth somewhere. Whether is it the energy department or, or whether is it the, the, the car, uh, supercharging, whatever. There's some sort of growth somewhere. So in terms of profitability, right? If let's say you throw back the question that I asked you for Baba, I think for, for Tesla, the growth is not so much just in the cash, not so much in profitability. We are also looking at the growth in the revenue. Lah. Yeah. So at the end of the day, right, we are kind of aiming for that FST, the, the moonshot, lah, so-called. So these all these are just stepping stones to that moonshot. How how when will it <laughs> actually happen? I think your guess is probably better than mine. Uh, my guess is always two weeks later, lo, like what Elon says. But sing <laughs> It's like we don't need uh, we are not like super uh, anxious because I think Elon did a pretty good job of uh growing the company, like making sure that every quarter there's some significant growth. La. So we are okay to hold on to the stock while he adjusts the FSD and makes it a reality. Lor. So we have all these FS, uh, FS, not FSD, the cyber truck and, and all this supercharging thing, insurance, energy is coming up 13%, I think last year or last quarter, I can't remember. So I think this year or next year, it might hit 20%. So I think, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good trajectory to be on because you have multiple boosters. Yeah, it's it's like having a lot of core options on one stock. So I'm I'm like <laughs> I'm I'm happy to be holding this stock. 
so to answer your question, right, coming back to the, the question you say, is there any particular, you know, metrics that I'm looking at? Like what you say, is it cannot be just one. So if their free cash flow goes down, two quarters, am I okay with it? Short answer is yes, I'm fine. Okay, but if let's say uh, there's two quarters, right, there's no growth in all the department, <laughs> then I think I have to go back and relook my thesis uh, because the, the, the thesis is that there's so many things ongoing. But if nothing is growing, then I shouldn't keep myself, right? I shouldn't keep myself that if something is going to uh, suddenly happen. Yeah, six months is a long time. And Tesla does a lot in six months. Yeah, so... Yeah, to, what to, if it's like an OA, OA crisis? Lock, nobody's spending money. Oh, this thing is going on before. Then Tesla can just um, cut car prices. Uh, that's what they did. Last year, right? Even though it's not as big of a recession as 08, then in that, in that case, we can just look at Tesla versus the competitors, right? Since Tesla has this margin and has this demand, they can cut prices and people will start buying the car all over again. And you'll see all the Tesla check group, the car owners, the, yes, a big big jump in members all over again. To add on what Eric said, right? Um, right now, everything that we see from Tesla, everything is just like good news over and over again, right? That there's new, new factory, they are opening up new factories, selling more cars, uh, breaking records quarter after quarter, uh, finally launching the Cybertruck after one or two. How many years already it was? I also forgot. I, I think it was like three years, four years already. <laughs> yeah, so, and all the bad news that we see from Tesla are just like temporary stuff, right? Uh, like China factory shutting down, uh, people, make, people from China making noise because Tesla car, pri car prices, Elon selling his Tesla shares. Everything that doesn't affect Tesla long term is just, is just noise law. Then there's no like long term bad news happening at Tesla. So it's hard to see Tesla uh, not doing well because everything is just temporary. All the bad news are just temporary stuff. Law. But the good news are all just adding, adding on and compounding over time. So we, we don't have any bears here, right? I feel like the bears, they're only... Thing for complaining, right? It's just the prices are too high and that competitors are catching up. For example, the BYD in China, they have full self-driving, which doesn't make sense because it's, it's only for a very specific location and it doesn't solve any full self-driving at all. If you want to talk about full self-driving, even NUS has their own full self-driving bus already. So, but can that bus drive everywhere? No, right? It's just in NUS itself. So uh, then other, uh, they will say that BYD is selling more cars than Tesla. But if you look at it, it's a mix of batteries plus petrol. It's not a real EV car. So again, that, that whole thesis of BEST is not valid. <laughs> Unless they can come up with a very valid case. Uh, in that case, I'll be getting worried. I think there's a long-term structural issue. Though. I posted a question to one of the fellow Tesla books on Twitter. I think I haven't got a reply yet. Like just yesterday. So he was talking about how bad Chinese in China is, how bad Hong Kong is, blah, blah, blah. So he was laying out the whole case, I think at least five or 10 points. So I was considering actually this China risk, right? How do you guys see when it's supposedly the most productive and churning out the most cars out of the entire suite of factories, right? Like they were saying how China's economy is extremely bad, a lot of all the politics, whatever, lah, and uh, the Thai whole Taiwan, China Taiwan issue as well. Like, do you guys quantify or are you guys even remotely afraid that something will break out? Or, I mean, 2020 COVID was an uh, exceptional case. I mean, they kind of settled it really. It was a one time thing. But I think this long term Taiwan issue and this whole posturing, uh, they're gearing up to, I don't know, fight a whole war economically, politically. What's going to happen when many of these companies that are MNCs that rely on them? I think not only in terms of production, because demand is also one part. So it's a two double whammy though. Production, you're going to get hit. Uh, demand, you're going to get hit. If let's say there is some sort of a core that comes out. It's the same for Apple. It's the same for Starbucks. It's the same for many of these MNCs. So I just wanted to wanted to hear what you guys, what, what, what's your perspective on this? Actually, I think the giga factories are diversifying. So we're not like super reliant on China giga factory per se. So I don't know, like Elon is taking steps to, to make sure that there is at least 
six to seven giga factories around the whole world. So in fact, even if China shuts down again, we have other factories to pick up the slack. Uh. So far, just, I don't see that. To, yeah, just to confirm, in terms of the numbers that they're churning out, what's the percentage of the China factory? At well, least for the last quarter. I am not really updated. Uh, but I do know that China has very high numbers. Uh. I quickly to go, I think in 2022, it's slightly more than half. So, so I think I think back back to that question again in terms of both demand and production, right? Despite diversification or whatnot, because everybody is saying, I mean, I'm gonna use some talking heads because I don't have authority here. So some of the defense ministers or whoever in Department of Defense in US, they're saying that China is gonna go to war and all this bullshit, right? Like there's a lot of posturing now. And let's say it's gonna something touch wood, something were to break out. That's 50% of the production gone though, at least in the short term now. So I'm just Getting some, trying to get some understanding of perspective on this. Yeah, uh, I'll compare this, right? I, I know that, okay, um, China is still a big market for Tesla in terms of production and demand. And if we just compare Tesla versus, uh, let's say, another company that I own, which is Apple, right? I think Apple is even more exposed to China because um, like Apple, their chips, is like all of them made by TSMC. So you have like, as long as TSMC just closed down, I don't know how, they, they will really suffer a lot. Nah. That, that's one. And, and then the they productions of Apple uh, can, but but it will it will suffer a lot. Nah. So, and then um, the other the other one is that the uh, manufacturing of Apple, uh, of Apple products, like especially iPhones, they are still heavily concentrated in, in China. So I think um, it's, it's like this, right? Because China is already like the largest economy um, in the world. So if China just like get detached from the global economies, I think the impacts, right, it will be a lot, a lot bigger. We, we, we can't just say that, okay, uh, the MNC that, that, that has exposure in China, they will be affected. The rest won't be affected. I don't think it will be the case because there's always all this chain effect. There will, there will be a lot of things that we, we don't, we can't see for now. Yeah. So, but if you compare Tesla, I would say Tesla is, like a lot more diversified compared to the rest already. Because you see, they have factory in Germany, they have factory in uh, US, Mexico. So if if I think in terms of the relative impact, there will be a lot lesser like, as compared to many other companies. Like. Even Microsoft, I think also they will, they, they will be impacted, right? Because they're still selling like Windows, uh, Microsoft in, in uh, China. So hard to get a... a like get away from it, like, given the size of the Chinese economy. Fun fact, I just read a news... Uh, they created a new OS in China. I don't know whether it will take over, over Microsoft, but I just am slightly concerned with all this posturing from every side. Everybody is trying to self-reliant. I don't even know what it means. Like, like you also said they want to decouple in China, but they don't even know what decoupling means because they had a whole conference to discuss what decoupling means. But yeah, it's just a lot of all these weird things going on in the world that, that when you are making a position or you're saying or discounting something, but... It needs to, you need to look at it like in totality and not just discount something and oh, all the companies are not affected. This is just my point. But anyway, I think, um, are there any concluding thoughts yeah. from the, the, the all, okay, any expectations for the earnings that is going to come out soon? Kelvin? <laughs> I feel it will split estimates, split estimates, yeah. But the stock price hard to tell. Maybe it will sell on news. <laughs> Eric, yeah? I think it will slightly beat optimistic uh, i'm optimistic it will slightly beat but i am I'm, I'm not really very confident that you will beat by a lot i mean i'll be quite surprised if you beat by a lot because their margin is not like fantastic uh. it's just the volume is up so okay maybe we'll have a slight beat yeah uh, i'll take the opposite uh. i i think i agree with uh eric's statement he said in terms of revenue growth, it all looks good. Uh, I think that one could beat, okay? But uh, on the margin side, I think it doesn't look good. Nah. So um, at, at least that's my expectation. Yeah. Then I'm also interested, like, for other parts, other other parts of the business, in terms of, like, the rest, do you have, do you, do you have an opinion on it? Like, really continue churning great growth? Um, how, how, would it, how would it play out? Anyone has any opinion? Yeah, so far, I think only the energy part looks like it's growing quite well uh i haven't really heard much about the other sectors uh, like the insurance part maybe not too significant uh, for people to take notice but the energy side is 
doing good. I think if it grows at 50% annually, I think it should be good. Uh, within 10 years, can match the auto side already. Okay, so do feel free to leave in the comment section down below what are your expectations or um, earnings for Tesla and whether you think it's a beat or not. So hope you guys enjoyed the discussion. If there are any Tesla bears out there, feel free to leave in the comments on your bad thesis because um, Kelvin say all of you don't have a uh, proper thesis for him to change his mind. So feel free to change his mind and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.